So I've been working on this character for a while and I was working on the weight painting and I got uh, quite a lot of questions about how exactly that works and how do I do it and uh, how does it all work and why am I doing it so quickly or, or like how. Um, so I figured it's time for a weight painting tutorial. The, I haven't found any good ones so might as well. Uh, and just to make sure everybody's on the same page, I'm going to start with the basics. So if we have a mesh, let's call this cylinder an arm or something, and it's got some geometry on it. Oh my god. I'm going to turn that off. And uh, I'll go in here, add a bone from armature single bone and then put this uh, in front we go in edit mode in this bone scale it down technically not weight painting but this is still kind of required information and I'll just have three bones and then select my tube select my armature control P set the parent armature deform with automatic weights and that means that once I go in pose mode here I can then rotate this and the mesh will follow that's the, that's the basic idea so what's happening under the hood is that this mesh now has three vertex groups and the vertex groups each uh, correspond with the names of the bones. This is bone 2, bone 1, and bone uh, just a bone. And the strength of these vertex groups is what determines how far these things move. And to see that, you would go in weight pain mode. You can see this is selected now. You go over here, this is selected. And this is selected. And the basic idea with weight painting is that you draw this color onto the mesh with your tools. And anyone that's tried this uh, probably hasn't had that much great experience with it because it's kind of an unintuitive process. Um, so one of the tricks is that each vertex has to be has to add to 1.0 weight across all of the groups that it's that it's in. You can see the weights each vertex has in edit mode in the end panel under item and vertex weights. And this one has point zero, uh, 0 0.151 in bone one, this one, and 0.849 on this upper one. So these always add to one. That's what the normalize is for. Um, if it doesn't have any um, any bo uh, weights, it's always gonna move with the with the root bone, I believe. So I always want to make sure it doesn't ha happen. So what if you wanted this to be more of a gradual transition? So the basic idea, how I would set this up, is I would enable. In here, on a viewport, wireframe. And then now, if you go here, you can see where each of the vert vertices are. And then this giant bone here is kind of in the way. So I'm going to go here in armature, viewport display, and set from octahedral to stick. And now this kind of too bright when it's selected. So I'm just going to go here. Uh, color single a little darker. So now when I select that, it's uh, visible. And then um, if you just go here, you can't really do much. But I guess you also, if you if you're in here, you might want to increase the brightness to make the colors pop a little more. So if you're in here, you can't really see much, or, or you, you can't really do much because you can't change the bones or move them around. So in edit menu, you 
un uncheck lock object modes. So that way you can select the armature, go in post mode in the armature, and select the bone, and then select your mesh, go in weight paint, and now you can move your mesh while you see your um, while you can see your weights. And to, uh, to reset the rotation, just Alt R. If you want to want if everything's kind of broken and you want it to reset, just select all and Alt R. And then control click to select the bone, shift click to select more than one bone. And then um, under here, if you're using the draw brush, control right click to select a weight. Or, or color pick a weight essentially. And then Shift F to change the strength of the brush. You can find all of the hotkeys under preferences, key, ma uh, key map, 3D view, weight paint, and weight paint global. So that's all your hotkeys. They, mine might be slightly different. I don't know if these are default or not. So that's the basics. Oh, and important things are that if you start modifying these right now, the very first thing you're going to do is mess up the weights because they're not going to add up to 1.0. Uh, so under options or in tools and options over here, you'll want to enable auto normalize, multi paint, and then um, generally I add X mirror if I'm using a uh, way painting on a character. I'll, I'll uh, enable X mirror and because I know my character and this thing is topologically symmetrical, same mesh on both sides, I'll enable top topology mirror. And then um, my most used tool is the smear tool. So in this case, I would just make a big brush, a low, low strength smear tool, just rotate this around and then kind of smear the weight around until it looks right. It's important to not pay attention to the color. It's all about how it moves. And that, that's, that's like how you know it is good is when it moves right. Here, if I'm trying to smear up, you notice that it produces a crease. Uh, that's because there is no weight uh, there's only one group here so it doesn't know what to put there so in this case i would select this and then smear up here and that way you're kind of adding onto that and then at the same time removing from this um you'll kind of notice that it's gonna lose some volume here that's kind of unavoidable uh one of the ways to solve that is to take um Preserve volumes, and that will make it uh, preserve uh, preserve its shape a little bit better. And another thing you can use is um, smooth corrective, which just tries to return it to the, to its original shape a little bit. Uh, generally, I would want to have those disabled though while weight painting. Those are just things that you add afterwards to make it look a little bit better. So, um, post mode, weight paint mode, smear, and that's that's kind of what the, the the basics of what you do. So, how would I use that on this character? I know for a fact that the the weights on this hand are kind of screwed up. I believe. Right, or did I fix it? Right. I, okay. So I I removed the the weights completely. So I'm going to do the same thing again, just select my mesh, no, uh, so, yeah, select my mesh, select the armature, and then pair in with automatic weights. Uh, and this thing is just using multi-res, so I can lower the resolution down to zero if I want. Generally, I just use at least level one, and I'll just enable the, the wires, I'll turn my Uh, turn my my thing to a stick, 
return the bones to sticks and go in pose mode over here and weight paint mode over here and then control click to select bones and kind of see how these things move um you'll notice that in this case i got lucky um, i just pressed r and x to rotate and the orientations of the bones matter a lot of the times when you're do doing things for video games but in, in this case i would also make sure the bone axes are correct just so that you could use rx to quickly move things in the way that they're kind of supposed to move so i'll enable axes here and just go through uh go, go through all of this to see that x is so in this this bone the the axis of rotation is, is over here but the axis show is like at the end here so you you'll want to use control r to modify the roll so that x is perpendicular to the rotation and z is towards the uh the rotation so x down and then y is pointing um sort of away from the base of the bone so this is kind of wrong so i will point x up and z that way and that is kind of wrong i want to point z down and x sideways do the same over here and over here and x that way and there and you go you could go through the entire armature to fix that so now if i go to post mode and try to rotate things i just do rx make sure everything rotates correctly as long as you're in local transform so this one didn't make the cut because that's wrong so let's go over here and then point z down x sideways and then do that again uh there we go and then do uh, rx and now it, now it's rotating roughly correctly so control click that rx i'm noticing now that in this case that's kind of caving in a little bit and it's moving too much on the wrist because there, there's a there's a bone here it's not supposed to move so i'll just use smear and then Kind of move the colors around and then test it the, it doesn't matter what the colors end up being you generally just want to kind of smear the colors around and then test it to see whether it moves right and that's kind of caving in a little bit so just sort of see how far i can push it until it fails and then try the next okay so that's that's definitely not right like this I don't think it would so pull pull that that much and that's kind of caving in a little bit so I'll do uh, some smearing over here and smear this so that it moves kind of correctly and those are still on good you'll only need this uh, brush mirror if you're working on the center like on this part for example and so on, you, you go through all of these and then kind of move that around and see that it it um, deforms correctly and it might be helpful to you know, select multiple and then just rx everything and try to form a fist for example and now i can definitely see that that's caving in way too much so now that I've got multi-paint on, I can smear all this down. And I, I may need to go over here and then smear this up. And then select these again. And you can see that now that I've done that, the palm doesn't cave in as much anymore. 
and that's moving too much. So generally the, the video games and such have a limitation of, of four vertex groups. And as far as I know, there is like tons of these because every bone has its own vertex group. Uh, so it may be useful to go in here and clean things even even to just get rid of these small splotches of blue here. So you do a clean and then limit to selected and then do that. And then maybe it produces kind of a hard edge, so you kind of want to smooth that out a little bit. And then if, if you get kind of a pinch over here, uh, that's what the blur tool is for. If you get kind of a, uh, a stronger pinch that doesn't go away with blur, the average is kind of a stronger version of that, of the blur tool. Uh, I don't really use a gradient that much, but it may be useful for something like this limb over here if you want to do a gradient from there to there. Or something and then and if if the the smear kind of fails sometimes you may need to just use the draw tool and then pick a weight control right click and then draw but i wouldn't use that because there's a danger that if you're painting here and you click on that now you have weights on there and it may be like too low to see um Yeah, so I would just use smear. Kind of move, move this. Let's see whether that moves right. Let's make sure that the the wrist kind of doesn't bend like a like a weird rubber hose. And and. You just kind of go through the same process or through the entire mesh. Uh, just select something and bend it and see whether it bends right. That seems to kind of... I would move that up a little bit. So you just smear it with a low strength to move that up. So now it kind of moves more correctly and then maybe blur this. And maybe move that. That's kind of pull the rib cage is kind of pulling the spine and the like too much of that, so just smear these up. Oh, and, and this uh, when I'm working on the middle, I probably want to have the asymmetry on so that way I'm working on both sides at the same time. If you end up messing your, your weights, one of the ways to fix. Uh, one of the ways to symmetrize weights is that you duplicate your mesh, you do a, a mirror modifier, and then use a data transfer modifier to transfer the weights back to the original. Um, because I don't think there's a way to transfer or just mirror weights after the fact. Just kind of have to be careful with that. That's correct. And then the shoulders always give me a little bit of trouble. Right here, it's kind of pulling the chest too much, so just use a pretty big brush and disable X symmetry. And I kind of move move that. There and then and now now you just kind of pull it in a little bit more and and just keep going on until you end up in a situation where it's kind of clipping into into it. Then maybe you can go in the neck and kind of extend that a little bit more. 
or something. And then the arm usually plays a big role here as well. So definitely you want to pull that in. And so on. So and that's the that's the basic idea. You go over the entire mesh, and once everything moves correctly, you've kind of won. Weight painting done. Um, ooh, sometimes you end up in a situation where um, like these fingers, for example, have weights on on the from the leg or something like that and there's a pretty simple fix for that um so let's let's like do let's actually add some weight from the leg here something like that and now if you go over here it's kind of weird and you don't know why it's moving wrong or something. Um, and it, it might be like any number of things. This is like really common. So the way I would fix that is go in edit mode, select my thing. I know that is uh, left hand index three is the name of the bone i would select the end like the area that's been affected and then just control g in edit mode and remove from all so that's that's going to make these have zero weight and then i would do assign to active group now there's weights missing from this um so then i go in edit mode and then just normalize all. That will get the weights back on the leg. So now, if I move that, that's fine, and the leg doesn't pull anything with it anymore. And if, if you want to, for example, add these eyes here, you would do parent with empty groups, and then go in weight pain mode over here, uh, edit mode over here, just select this I and then do select I, that's the left eye, and then assign to active group. Right. Then you do select this I and assign to active group. I guess you could click over here too. I'm just used to using this menu for some reason. And now the eyes are parented. You could use that for armor pieces or something like that. Um, it might be smart to just kind of remove the eye. This is kind of an ex excellent example of, of like troubleshooting again. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove left eye and right eye and then just normalize again. Oh, that's not correct. Okay. I'll make all this be the head. Maybe I want all this to be head. Did I remove head? Oh, I guess I removed it. So let's make that head that's the active group and then assign so now things should move correctly i think uh those have extra weights 
Oh my god. Um, actually, remove from all and then assign to active. There we go. There we go. That's kind of what, kind of what I expected. I need to go in, in the weight pay mode and fix that. this and then you go over here see that's kind of weird transition so then you would just like, smear all this up I think that kind of covers everything that I would need to know about weight painting and all the issues that might come up hopefully that will make weight painting less painful for you in the future. Uh, I probably missed something very obvious. And if you have any questions, I recommend you come stop by my stream and and, and ask me. That's the best way. I stream every day on twitch.tv slash flotar. Six years in a row now. So I'll probably be online every day. There we go. That's that's the head weight painted with the eyes as well. And uh with the same techniques you could probably go through the entire mesh and and uh get everything working right. Hope that helps. Um thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you later.